Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. This week, me and Bianca, just so y'all know, if you don't know, we've snuck off three times and went to town on dog walks. We and have to sneak there now. Yeah, we have to sneak because we got <laughs> stalkers and shit, so we're trying to sneak around. But anyway, we've had fun. Uh, well, it's just been me and her and Nancy and Suzanne, and we just grab a few client dogs and take off town and go work with them for a half hour, hour, and buzz back up to the house and... It's just I don't know. It's fun. Uh, we've had a we had a long hard week for spring break because everybody left their dogs here. But, uh, so after that, a lot of them went home. So we've had a little bit. It seemed like not a lot to do, but we still had quite a few dogs here for training. And we just had some that really need to go to town. <clears throat> so. I think, if I'm not mistaken, even though we do talk now when there's not very many people on here, there's a lot of people come back and listen to it, correct? Correct. Yeah. So we're just going to pretend there's a lot of people on here. We're going to talk about uh, people who buy puppies, puppies because they need emotional support. They've got a hard time, you know, they whatever reason, they ran out of money or they lost their job or lost a loved one, you know, it could be anything, or lost their other dog. I mean, a lot of times people lose an old dog, uh, they get a puppy. And I think they grieve over that puppy, and they put a lot of pressure on the puppy because they don't make it mine uh, a car into a dog's world. And the puppy gets by with lots of things, mouthing on you. You know, there's a myth out there, I feel. Some, it, isn't a myth something that it really ain't there, they think it is, right? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a myth out there that puppies mouth on people and that's normal. They teeth on people and it's normal. I don't agree with that. I've never, and I mean, I've raised a lot of puppies, my cow dogs over the world, and they're pretty mouthy. They I mean, they bite your pants legs and your shoelaces and everything else, but I never allowed it from day one. they just never been allowed to do that, so I've never had a, a big issue with it. Now we do have issues with it because... We train those kind of puppies and dogs, and I remember we had one pup here was 10 months old, and someone had told us owner that it would grow out of the mouthiness, and it never did. I yep. mean, we got it 10 months old, and the people's arms were bruised up, and they had red marks on them where the dog had drew blood, and they just, for whatever reason, <clears throat> they kept accepting it, and I think they got help a time or two with the pup, but it, it just never got over it, and when we got it, it got over it, and... We ended up owning that dog for a while, and then I gave it to someone, and it's just a great dog, and they've never had trouble with it since they got it from us, but it's just because I think we stopped it, and the hard thing is for people is when they have these puppies, a lot of times if they get mouthed on or bit, and these little pups' teeth are like needles, so if they stick you with one of them, people screaming, and the puppy really bites because then the puppy like game is on now. We're having fun. You're jumping and screaming and hollering yeah. and waving your arms at me. And, and the, I, I always defend a pup because I don't feel they want to bite you. They don't want to hurt you. They're just playing a game. Yeah. So you get to work with puppies a lot now because you do the puppy package thing. So people bring pups in here that want to mouth on you. Yeah. yeah. And they don't always just quit. No. I mean, I walk, was walking by the other day and said hi when you had one out here, and it was done trying to eat your lunch, and I came in there and worked with it a little bit. And, yeah. But it is. It's, I don't know. Sometimes experience helps in anything yes. you do. Yes. It doesn't matter yeah. whether it's playing ball or horseshoes or training dogs or riding horses. Experience helps, you know, and I feel here with the puppies, like I said, I've raised, I don't even know, a thousand or two thousand pups over the years. So I've had a lot of puppy experience and, and Henri, like I said, Henri pups. So it was never an issue with me with my cow dog pups. And 
I think that the reason it is issues is because of the myth out there that it's just normal for right. puppies to mouth you. Yeah. Little kids don't get a bite you. I don't think. Maybe now they do. But when I was growing up, if you had a kid a year or two old, you didn't, people didn't let them bite them. Just because they needed a tea, they got them a freaking teething ring or whatever it was. <clears throat> Sometimes they froze them, I think, with water in them and give them to the kids to chew on so yep. they had something cold. Yep. But I think that with the puppy, if they bite you, mouth on you, whatever you want to call it, nip you, it's really hard for you to make them stop and then I think give them a chew toy. Yeah. I think that's two different things. I yeah. think for me, if I was going to give my dog a chew something, I would probably give it to them without a reasoning other than I feel they need it. Right. Now, if my pup drug my slipper into the living room, I'd probably, I don't know, swat him with it or something and tell him no. But... People go get these puppies and they think, oh, they're just going to be great. You yep. know, they watch Snoopy or something on TV and think, man, these pups are cool. Yep. They're, they're a lot of work. A lot of work. I mean, especially if they're a house dog pup. Yes. I've never yes. had a house yep. dog pup, so my dogs are always raised in the kennels. Now. I think that's something mm. that's changed a lot. Like, all of my friends and my dogs when I was a kid generally lived in the yard yes they didn't sleep on the bed yeah. and couch all the time yeah and the yard wasn't like <clears throat> four by four yeah it was like property that they ran around on and they never really got into a whole lot of trouble and they for me i think my dogs now but uh i can't remember what dog it is but i was just talking to somebody yesterday or day four might have been day i don't know but they're working on a kennel that. <laughs> They're working on a kennel for an outdoor like eight by ten or eight by twelve or whatever. Yeah. They're gonna put a not a concrete slab, but they're putting that fake wood, whatever you call it down. Uh the plastic stuff. I can't remember what you call it now. But that's gonna be his floor. And then I'll always put top on these dog kennels because some of them will climb out. Yeah. I mean Yeah, no. Good. And for me, a lot of times you put them dogs outside away from you. I mean, don't put them out in the baking sun, 100 degree weather, and yada, yada, yada. You know, you got to use some Give common sense. Shade. If you don't yeah. have some, call us. We'll try to help you. But uh, <clears throat> I think they need to have a place to get away from the human. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some of these dogs come here and they're like, Marvin, just tell mom, dad, leave me the hell alone once in a while. Let me be a dog. Yeah. yeah. And people don't. And so yeah. that's what causes it. And like I said, don't do everything we recommend or we won't be able to train dogs no more. We'll have to get a real job. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I don't either. Yeah, so <laughs> you can listen to whatever works for this. But the thing is, for me, I feel that, you know, we can go back to our kennels out here and show you, I don't know how many dogs that are cool, mm -hmm. that are our dogs, and some client dogs out here now too. And hundreds and hundreds of other dogs the people can take them to the beach, and they can take them to the woods, and they can take them wherever, and they can take them to town and make them lay by the chair and while they're eating lunch outside, where a lot of places now you can eat outside because they got tables and chairs in the streets and shit in places now because they banned us from going inside for a while, I guess, and some people decided it's fun to leave them out there so they can sit outside and eat and drink. But I think whenever it comes to the, like we were talking with the puppies, People just like, oh, I want a puppy, and they go get a puppy, and then they're like, oh, crap, what did I get? And I don't know. It's just hard because you got to potty train them in the house, and you got to get up in the middle of the night and let them go out and go to the bathroom, and sometimes you got to take them for a walk or put them on a treadmill, get them some exercise yeah. at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. So they'll go back to sleep. Yeah. But if you really think about it, a lot of kids are that way, little babies. You know, they wake up middle of the night and you got to change yeah. your diaper. And, yeah, and you can't you just know, be like, them. hey, little baby, be quiet. Yeah, and the dog's the same way. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> and a lot of people want, you know, we've got a couple different customers now that can't put their cat and dog together because they can't get along. I've never had that issue, but Me I've never either. really been a huge house dog person. Jody had Trent in here for 15 years or whatever, but I don't know how many cats we had during Trent's life. And 
we've never had a litter box since I, I don't think ever since Joey and I have been together, 20 some years. And we've always had an indoor cat that came in and went out. I mean, it goes to the back door and that thing wakes me up middle night. <laughs> rawr, rawr, and you got to get up and let it out. And, and Jody will act like she don't hear it. So I finally get tired of listening to it. I get let it out. But it won't let me let it in during the daytime. At night it will. And I know the damn cat knows who I am. It's like it can't imagine. I can't imagine it thinks, oh, that's Jody at 3 o'clock in the morning and let me in. Because if I get up go to the bathroom and I sit sitting out her bedroom window, patio door, whatever you want to call it, I'll go let it in because it is a cool cat. But our dog has always got along with our cats. You know, even, uh, what is that little thing that Irene has now? Libby? Libby. We had her for a little while, and I don't know if uh, Willie ever got used to that dog. Probably not because the dog's hers, but. Well, it's simple to leave the damn dog alone, dog leave Willie alone. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. But whenever you got to lock a dog in one bedroom and a cat in the other one, I don't know. That's something would have to be rehomed, either me or the dog or the cat. I'll be sleeping in the kennels, I guess. I know it's it's kind of crazy how often that's the solution is to just isolate each. And, it, and people. I know. You know, I, I had know. a client years ago that, they couldn't sleep in the same bedroom because the freaking little dots and thing wouldn't let the lady in the husband's bedroom. That's crazy. I'm like, oh, I cannot. When did the <laughs> dog get the job? <laughs> Does he make the payments? Did he buy the bed? What's the deal? You know, so it is bad. And I mean, people get divorces over dogs. Yeah. I mean, yep. they rehome dogs. I think dogs cause couples to keep from getting together because their dogs can't get along. I mean, I don't know. I know we get there. We're there. A lot of people are. And I don't know. We're a lot of times we're the stopping point where they're like about <laughs> to move in with each other, but they can't until they fix their dogs. Yeah. I've done that a lot of times over the years. Yeah. I'd be like the mediator to get the dogs to get along so the couple could get together and move <laughs> together. And, stuff. and <clears throat> you know, but it is hard. <clears throat> I think a lot of times people don't understand. Some dogs have just a certain quirk. They just can't tolerate it. You know, they can't yeah. tolerate guns or fireworks. Or Scout doesn't like dish towels. <laughs> like what? Dish towels. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. That's right. I'll never do that. Now I'm going to be chasing him around with a dish towel. He will run. <laughs> but what people accept with their dogs, you know, yeah. Now, and on the set, flip side of that is what dogs need you to accept. Right. Like, some dogs don't like Joe Bob running up to them with their arms out. Oh, I want to hug right. your dog. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. And a lot of these dogs will try to get away from the situation. Yes. And Joe Bob's little sister's like, no, you stay here, Fluffy. You need to be petted by yeah. this wine old beard wearing, I don't know, gorilla looking dude. <laughs> And Fluffy's like, dude, I weigh 10 pounds and I'm scared of this monster. I want to leave. And they're, no, no, yeah. you're okay. And I think that a lot of times that's what gets people in trouble. Which is just wild to me because if somebody approached me and wanted to give me a hug and I didn't feel like giving them a hug, yeah, I might slap them. I know, and that's what the dogs want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I feel that the majority of the time, like Bear, Roxy, and Mari. Now, they'll let anybody pet them. <laughs> yeah. Callie? Now, if you come up to her all crazy, wall-eyed and shit, yeah. and your arms up in the air, gooing and all, she might yeah. growl at you. Yeah. She has a guy or two here. Yeah. But anybody who's normal with her, you know, in my world, normal dog, she'll like you. Yeah. But you just can't be all crazy with her. She yeah. doesn't like that shit. Yeah. And so... I scolded her the last time she growled snapped at a guy, <clears throat> but I didn't scold her near as bad as I did the guy. Right. I'm yep. like, dude, you can't yep. approach dogs yep. like that. Yeah. And I offended someone here a while back, I guess, because I, you, they wanted a pet. Oh, yeah. Chili. Yeah. And you looked at me, and I'm like, no, because the person was all, ooh, oh, this lady, super nice lady, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we hurt her feelings because I said, no, she, the puppy's in training, you know. Yeah. And it's just because she was going to make Tilly pee all over herself and yeah. jump on her and yeah. stuff. And yeah. 
There's no reason yeah. for it. There's nothing good going to come out of yeah. that situation except the lady would be really happy walking away. Yeah. But now she has something to gripe about. So yeah. We didn't let her pet the puppy. Yeah. But it is hard. I mean, it's just really hard for people to understand that. And, you know, all dogs don't like loud noises. I mean, all dogs don't like uh, golden retrievers, we've been told. Yeah. We've got two yeah. dogs. We there have like one in week. there now that doesn't like pit bulls and healers. Yeah. I mean, so they're just dogs that are different, you know, but. <clears throat> the majority of the dogs that don't like, like the pit bull healer dog. Yeah. It'll probably be fine with pit bulls yeah, and healers. I agree. As long as everything is good. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine with me, once we handle a dog for a week or two, if I'm walking down the street, and I can't imagine this dog's going to be okay with a lab, but not okay with a blue healer. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel that'll be the case, but maybe. Yeah. Brett, you got a question? Yeah, I got some comments here, too. Amanda Bocolt says Jordan Tier is getting another puppy. And then says, I have a French bulldog and she doesn't want to run too far. Laugh out loud. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alyssa Winslow says Piper loves being a real dog up there. She did. She had a lot of fun. Piper, the little beagle. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then we got Molly Robertson says Bear is a perfect baby. <laughs> As long as you're not a cow, he Bear is. probably agrees. <laughs> as long as you're not a cow, goat, or sheep, you're good. So isn't Jordan Tear the one that she said is getting another pup? Isn't that the one with, um, what's his name? That blue healer that was really cool. And then she just brought in that other one, Roxy. What was the first one's name from like a year ago? The two blue healers. She moved to Texas. Oh, Jordan? Yeah. You're getting another dog? What is she getting? <laughs> I'm missing out, Jordan. I, uh... French bull. Oh, uh, just getting another puppy. Didn't. Oh, yes, Rodeo and Roxy. Yeah, yeah Rodeo. Amazing. That was the first one. Oh, huh, that's funny. You can just <laughs> never have enough, I guess. Is it probably going to be another healer? <laughs> I would guess. You got to remember what I said about them, and you're a newlywed, so. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, we got any questions? The That's girl at the coffee stand the other day was telling me all about her dog and how she wants to bring it up, and she said she went down the YouTube rabbit hole watching all of our videos, and then she said, I have one, la one lab healer and then a healer. <laughs> I said, did you hear what Marvin said about healers? And she <laughs> said, no. I said, okay, you will. <laughs> <coughs> you know... The, for me, you know, we was talking earlier about people getting a puppy for um, emotional support dogs. Yes, we rabbit trail a little. Yeah, we got off of it, but I, I studied, I, I, I think I talked about it quite a bit too, but it is, it's just hard. I think that people get them for a dog or a puppy, you know, they'll rescue a dog also whenever they have a lot of trauma in their life mm -hmm. or drama, either or. Yeah. And... Or a really hard job. Yes. Yeah. And it just makes it hard on them, you know. And it's really hard on these dogs to try to live with all that. And, and I mean, <clears throat> for me, I feel that people sometimes don't understand that my thoughts are, and a lot of other people's too that I know, if you get a dog from day one, and you demand respect in a way the dog will understand, they will respect you forever. Yeah. But if you bring them home and start oohing and on and feed them che yep. cheeseburgers, yep. french fries, let them lay on the couch, yep. you know. Somebody the other day commented, I don't remember who it was, that, yeah, I just can't get my dog off the couch. I was talking to someone about the couch today because I was saying they were trying to figure out why the dog did so good for us but not for them. And I was saying, maybe you started with affection and maybe this dog was on the couch with you all the time. And they said, well, she has a couch. <laughs> <laughs> Her own couch. It's just bad. And she's a puppy. So this little puppy has its own title in the house. Yeah, they, they just, man, goodness, they own things, don't own things, don't own And things. I know how bad it goes when they do. Not all the time, but you know, sometimes we go over it goes this. really I'm not, south. I'm not going to throw people under the bus, but 
for me, a lot of times, it's like Charlie yesterday or day before at the park. He was so good for me, and then he was so bad for you. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. I, and I don't know for sure, but I feel the reasoning is is because he's used to the boy that handles him and not a, yeah. not a woman. Mm-hmm. And so it just stresses him out. He went from that boy to me as yeah. his leader yeah. and not you. And yeah. now, by the time the walk was over, I think he was doing decently, you know. Yeah. But we'll take him back again and hopefully he'll do a lot better. But yeah. He's just a stressful kind of dog. And <clears throat> some of these dogs stress because they're with a person. 24-7, in the truck, in the car, in the house, wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, or if they're not with them, they're at home whining and whimpering, waiting for them to get home yeah. so they can yeah. be with them. Yeah. And then when the human comes home, they're like, oh, Fluffy, I ain't seen you all day. And they tell them about their day, and Fluffy listens to them while he's bouncing off the wall. Yeah. And so it just escalates from there. And so, I don't know. Here recently, somebody's talking about they hide in the bathroom when they get home from work, so the dog settles down. I think Jody was telling us about that. Uh, she's yeah. pretty bad. Yep. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, Brett, she said she think? sprints to the bathroom. Brett's door. over there laughing. So. I know what <laughs> happened. Somebody on TikTok says, "What's in the in the jug? Moonshine?" Yeah, <laughs> 120 proof. <laughs> We iced it down. This we might not, not so be hot. yawning so much if that is what was in it. <laughs> uh, then you got Amanda. She said she'll be back for training. Yes, a chocolate color. Uh, and then Nancy McCann says, Evening, everyone. Hunter and I had a great day. Hey, Nancy. With you all. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, Hunter has fun. fun having her come to town. Yeah, it is. Hey, Suzanne. Is Suzanne on here? I haven't seen her yet. I know she's normally here, though. Huh? She's normally here. I haven't seen her comment yet, though. Probably hiding in the cloud thing, whatever you call it. <laughs> hiding in the cloud. <laughs> Just waiting to see if we're going to throw her under the bus or not. So, uh, what subject you got tonight? Um, I didn't really plan any. So, I'm going to come up with I want to talk yeah. about, what do you think the one hardest thing is for people to master with their dog? Loose leash. Yeah. Why? You know, I don't know. I've showed and showed and showed y'all how easy it is. How it takes like minutes. And it ain't easy. It's not. No. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes we want to throw shit at you when you say it's easy. <laughs> I think that sometimes <clears throat> the dogs that are coming in, <laughs> I think that maybe, like Nancy says that Hunter, and, uh, what's his name, likes to watch me on Facebook Live. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that. But Jack, uh, yeah. or what's yeah. his name? Her other dog? Jack's, yeah. Jack and Hunter come and watch me on Facebook yeah. Live. Yeah, she said Hunter watches me too. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so I think sometimes before the people brings these dogs in, they watch Facebook Live. The dog does, and they're like, shit, that guy is going to make me mine, so I might as well just do it. And that lady, nah, she's a pushover, so we'll take advantage of her. <clears throat> and that's what happened. And you just had to fight with But her. there are so many dogs that I I now get why you say it's easy. There are so many that, like Luna is easy for me now. There are so many of them that are easy. But then there's just, one every once in a while that I'm like, holy crap, I don't but know. But it'll just get to be less and less of those ones that are harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you look a year and a half ago. You would have, like, pulled your hair out and throwed rocks when you seen Luna. Yeah. And she just like, man, I got this. I think yeah. I understand yeah. it. Now, and she Rocco, it. he don't have it so good. No. He still don't. He still yeah. struggles with it. Yeah. With, I think, maybe you some, yeah. the lady. Me and him, I mean, it took me. I don't, we got it on video somewhere. It's like, I don't know, five seconds, and he yeah. was, like, hooked up to my leg being yeah. good. And, but. I mean, you can just, you know, I always throw shit against the wall when we're talking, you know, or throw it out there, I guess. I, uh -huh. but I think a lot of times, like me, there's times when you're like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> no, you're freaking not. You can't be like telling me stories, you know, you're like blowing smoke. <clears throat> you want to be, but you're just not, you know what I mean? I'm going to have some more moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> 
You try to convince yourself that you're because fine. sometimes it pisses me off when I feel like I'm fine and then I find out I'm not by someone else telling me that. But are they usually wrong? That's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just like Suzanne, I see when she gets an attitude. And I feel like that. And her attitude's totally <laughs> different than yours. You like want to kill shit. <laughs> Suzanne wants to just shrink away and hide. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes I think you say this and Brett enjoys that you also have to experience my attitude. Did I what? He enjoys that you also have to experience my attitude. Oh, <laughs> thanks, bro. <clears throat> I feel like so much of that, all that shit in our heads, how our day was yesterday, what we what we did 20 minutes ago. The lady with uh, that black dog I worked with today, what's his Snoopy? name? Snoopy? Yeah, was talking about how she, what did she say? She said, he's just so calm. Who is? You. Oh. And even if you are aggravated at something that happened 20 minutes ago, that doesn't feed down the no, line I'm of done. your No, I'm done. I'm done. And I think that's really, <clears throat> really hard for people. And so, like, when we're at the in-town walks, there are a few select people that when you say we're doing it wrong, we get an attitude and we get worse. Like, yeah. We make the dog worse, and we get yeah. worse, and then we start. That's to why try sometimes I just dog. trade dogs for people. <laughs> but that's just such a hard but thing. But the thing is, whenever you customers. get, whenever you get to where you want to just slap somebody, you know? Yeah. And you're right there, and then somebody hands you a dog leash, and you're like, "Oh, you work your dog," and then as soon as you hand the leash back, you just go and slap them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's when you've got some words. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I'm that way. Yeah. I could be like just ready to choke somebody and you hand me a dog and a leash, I'm good. Yeah. I'll yeah. train them a dog. Yeah. And then but when I get the leash back, I'm That's might why continue. sometimes at the park I go the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I feel that for me the dog training is so fun because it is I mean, I don't like to get bit. I told somebody the other day I've never got bit good. It's always bad when I get bit, but <laughs> I've never gotten bit bad where I had to go get sewed up and right. yada yada yada. Right. I mean, peroxide. Well, or, maybe it's one time you should have, but you uh, didn't. <laughs> that's busy. But I just feel that people, you know, like the day the little dog. <laughs> I afford you some. The big jug headed dog was under his yeah. breath. Yeah, yeah. And I could feel it on the leash. I know, you could tell. And I but just, I couldn't it was hear so it. so low, I knew you couldn't hear it. Yeah. And then the, finally the dog, he growled long, loud enough that the lady heard. And I don't even know if you were in there that time. You might have been. But I felt the growl on the leash, and you yeah. couldn't even hear it. Yeah. But it was still there, because, and that dog, I still say he don't want to bite nobody, but I damn sure wouldn't walk up somebody. Yeah, with him. I agree with you. I don't think he did either, but I wasn't going to find out yeah. today. If we had Suzanne, she would have went over and said, hey, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that some of the things is for us to talk about is the in-town walks. Yeah. You know, I've never been an in-town walk dog person other than 30 years ago when I trained my first dog that uh, had chocolate lightning sport. But I feel that there's so many times that <clears throat> for us, we go to town and walk dogs. But majority of the time is somebody uh, like the black and white dog here today that was really aggressive towards people on a leash. For me, if I had that dog for a couple of days, I'd probably go anywhere and wouldn't worry about him. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, I probably wouldn't let anyone handle him. Right. But I would, and I think he right. would be okay. Because today, even he laid down and... Uh, but he didn't yeah. even get up and touch the leash yeah. a couple of times whenever yeah. they walked by the door because he had time, you know, and I think that's one of the hard things is for these dogs when you're in town with them and you're training on them, you can't just stop everything and settle your dog. No, and it's really hard for most normal people to not worry about what their neighbor is thinking of them as they're walking by with that problem. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But like me, <clears throat> in the round pen, we could take the person away from them, uh -huh. or we could take the dog away from them yes. whenever we're in the round pen. And we do a lot, Yeah, you know, especially dogs. If yeah. we're in there with a dog like that black dog uh, that just went home that was at the park the other day. Uh, Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. 
We took the dogs out. Yeah. Because she lost her mind. She yep. wanted to kill stuff. Yeah. But if you're at the park or walking in town, you can't take that dog out of it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so you don't get to just try to stop it and fix it yeah. and teach your dog it's not a good yeah. thing to do. Yeah. We're here, we can, because we can take the other dogs away. Yeah. And I feel we're fortunate to have a round pen with a big solid walls and we can block everything out of it. And, and yeah. it helps a lot versus having to stick it out. And now we're talking about doing this two day obedience clinic here. Police reactivity clinic. Yeah. yeah. And I think it'd be fun, you know. Yeah. But everything's got to be lined up, set up right. And, you know, sometimes on those deals, <coughs> we could have it where people could even roll in if we're coming from out of state or something on Friday evening. <coughs> Spend the night out here in a trailer, camper, or whatever, tent or whatever. And then they can be here Saturday morning bright and early. And I mean, I've had people come from Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, all, we're all two clinics. So, and I feel that, you know, we have good enough pens and pastures and fenced areas and we have me and you both training and Suzanne, if she's still here, or whoever's training with us at the time. So we have plenty of help here to split it up and we'll limit it to like six or eight dogs is the yeah. max, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't like to go over that. I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. It don't work for me. Yeah. It's not yeah. enough time per dog. Yeah. And <clears throat> if we do it an hour and an hour break, you know, an hour, an hour break for us, I don't know. We always go over the hour and start early or whatever, we you do. know, just yeah. because we just stand around and bullshit and talk dogs anyway in between times. But it'd be really good for people to be able to do that because of the fact that, especially with all the videos we have now that we don't have the paperwork on whatever Brett lost last night. <laughs> How many people <laughs> see this dog? <laughs> but we could have the dogs, you know, that sometimes are real problem dogs like Boo Boo. That dog was bad. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, what's his name? <laughs> Hugh. Hugh. <laughs> you gotta quit taking that dog off leaving in public. <laughs> Throwing this out there. Don't always do what we talk about doing and always remember to be safe i mean it's just fun for me to see where you went with boo i mean that's just amazing it how is. fast so before cool. you went and, yeah you know the biggest thing is for me like that dog if it would have been in the wrong hands it could have been a terrible outcome yes yeah but he's so dedicated to his dog and he has the time he does yeah and he know. puts in <clears throat> the work Yes, I mean he walks. I don't know what yeah. he say five miles every day or whatever. I don't know a lot more than I do. And he just he takes his dog and his dog behaves now. It don't drag on him, and I mean it's just fun to see the dedication and he you know, did. In his defense, he did say it was an empty parking lot, but <laughs> as a safety protocol, <laughs> there used to not be people live in Oregon too. And now there's like lots of them everywhere, you know. But I feel that. Sometimes you can be just as dedicated as he is. You can have just as much time as he has, and you still don't get the outcome. He's kind of got the same chill about life mentality as you, though. With working his dog, he does 100%. Yeah. He just does not feel he can fail. Yeah. And yeah. I wish I could have that influence on more people. Yeah. Less people would fail, but it's hard. Yeah. I mean, as you know yeah. yourself, it's yeah. hard to just yeah. be like, no, I'm good. Yeah. You know, we're not always good. Yeah. Like the dog that wags his tail ain't going to bite you. That's a myth that it's bullshit. Yeah, it's not true. Worst dog bite I got was a dog that was wagging his tail so happy to see me until he yeah. got his strike and did and he got me. It's like a happy <clears> tail <throat> wag and then a flagging to bite you yeah. tail wag. And this dog had a happy <laughs> tail wag. But I think he was happy that he was getting close enough that he could bite me. So I don't think we can always go by. You can't always go by the ears. You can't always go by the tails. Look at Doby. His ears yeah. are back. If you didn't know that dog, know. you'd think he's going to kill he's you. He's got ice eyes like he's a yeah. villain off his of a superhero movie. His ears are laid back movie. flat on his neck yeah. like, I'm going to take you out. Yeah. And so I don't know. I but think he's just like, who's going to pet me? <laughs> or give me a treat. <laughs> Cheeseburger, fries, anything. Brett, what kind of thing? Uh, Deanna Whitworth says she hates that you changed the set your dog free to Friday because she can't come. Oh, the walk. Yeah. Deanna Whitworth. Well, she Whit can join us when we sneak into town. Deanna? Dina. With oh, Willie. Willie. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to put her on the... 
Yeah. 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 We'll we'll give you the secret sauce. And then uh, Hugh Penland just comments. (laughs) He said it was an abandoned office building, (laughs) two thirds fence, no dog, no people, no traffic. That's the only reason I tried. By the way, it's two point five to three miles a day. You didn't see the person in the parachute, Hugh, coming down by you? You missed him. And then you got Leah Blake. She said, I'm so excited for help tomorrow night with Ronnie. The videos, live conversations, the blue pit and posts really help. Blue pit it, Ronnie. You know, I can't wait till she gets here so I can lecture because I used to see that dog and I ain't seen that dog for a year or two. Well, go ahead and start the lecture now. I already did. Us. I don't know where she's been hiding. Good luck tomorrow, Lee. Yeah, it's like you had no confidence until you see Boo Boo come out and everything is good. Now it's like, oh man, we can take any dog now. <clears throat> no, I'm excited about seeing y'all too. There's a couple of dogs out Jack that used to come here all the time. And then the black dog with the muzzle. Yeah. That bit someone and then we got him all fixed up and then I hadn't seen him forever. Just kind of wonder. Some of you people, if you're on here hiding in the shadows of the clouds <laughs> watching, she can say, hey, hi. I don't know how you do that. but yeah, There's about 20 people here in and out. Some people cool. just don't say anything at all. I know they don't. They just hide there and wait for me to stick my foot in my mouth. And they're going to be like, no. They're just waiting to defend themselves. i got to get on live and see if Marvin talks shit tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh said, oops, I missed the parachute guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen him down at the hospital. <laughs> Leah Blake says, I got hurt so we need help <laughs> i got hurt by our dog he probably drug her down that's not good no hope you're fine sounds like you are you're coming back to this but yeah one of these days i'm gonna get on there and i'm gonna look through the list and see who's been sneaking around on here and i'm gonna throw them under the <laughs> sneaking bus sneaking around i'm gonna throw them under the <laughs> they bus they didn't have a hall pass to join right. facebook live without saying hi to marvin yeah if you're I'm on gonna, here you better say hi to marvin yeah, i'm gonna throw somebody under the bus <laughs> he might find a way to kick you off I'm tired of throwing all these same people under the bus. We need a new one. I can think of somebody. Who? I don't know. <laughs> I want to think of somebody. You know, I want to talk about confidence. I don't know if Mia's mommy's on here, right? Mia? Yeah. The little German Shepherd. Oh, yeah. We yeah. took that dog to yeah. town, what, yesterday and today? Yeah. And, you know, there's only one other person that I could think of, and that's Frodo's owner. Yeah. That changed like this. I yeah. mean, yeah. you could see the change when she got out of the vehicle. I didn't even recognize her. I, I know. I know. I mean, she I just know. went from the, I need my dog to help me the first time we met her till this time she needs to help her dog. And she, the whole first week, studied yeah. what her dog was learning. She watched your videos, listened to your podcasts. And it's just fun for people to, I mean, one of these days this year will let us, we'll show the pictures of her and her dog. Yeah. Her arms. Yeah. yeah. For Miss Pup. Yeah. And then we'll show you with that pup laying in her lap or walking on the beach or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, to show people that it can be fixed yeah. and it's not. You know, I, I feel there's so many backroom dogs and backyard dogs that people don't bring out in public because they're too bad. Yeah. And yeah. it just scares me to think about the dogs that people keep away from people, you know, and, and, and the ones that I don't know that they're necessary to be kept away. Yeah. I mean, you got to use common sense. Don't bring, you know, fiasco or whatever out to eat somebody. I, don't even say, I guess I can say that because we know fiasco too. You can't bring John, Joe Bob's dog out and let him eat somebody just because we say don't hide your dogs in the back room. <clears throat> but I still think that, you know, for us, I think, you know, put enough edu- educational videos out there like we're doing that people can see that some of these dogs can really be fixed. That's what we want is for people Frodo, to see. Frodo, I mean, that picture, yeah. I don't know if we ever put it on the internet of Frodo. Not yet, no. It will go up. Yeah, we'll yep. put that picture up of Frodo. I mean, that dog came here bad, and then they ended up rescuing a dog from Newburgh Shelter. Yeah, yep. A husky that yep. was here that yep. was honor. I mean, nice dog, just honor and shit. But they ended up fixing Frodo, and then they adopted the other one. Yeah. What was the name, Trigger? Trap. Trap, yeah. They adopted Trap. And it was so cool because they got two cool dogs. Yeah. But that's a family that changed. I mean, the daughter had Frodo, and then... The husband was kind of lying, and then mom just stepped in and said, she no, did? I'm taking over. Yep. 
And she and does great. She did. That dog's yep. so cool. And yep. I mean, it's fun to see success stories like that. Yep. And they're not our success stories. We just helped. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> we gave them the tools, and they used them right, yeah. I feel, yeah. To, yeah. to be able to succeed. And, yeah. uh, me, leash work is always something I talk about. We still want to make this great video, but it's kind of like the barrel video. It That's just great. hasn't got done. And we've made, you know, we get a dog out like today. Man, we're ready to make it. It's like, shit, the dog won't pull on the leash. Like, well, we'll wait till we get another one, I guess, you yeah. know. And I think sometimes... Sometimes the dogs are like, man, I don't have to pull you around. Well, then I'll take a break, walk with you. Yeah. And sometimes they just like, Rocco wanted to drag that lady tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why. I mean, hopefully we'll figure it out. But it's just really hard. I mean, sometimes to get these dogs to just settle in and respect everyone, you know. Mm -hmm. So, Brett, you got anything you want to throw yes, out there? Yes, you do. Uh, Leah Blake says, no, not Ronnie, of course, Ronnie's perfect. <laughs> uh, Valerie Jaster says, y'all are just busy with all the doodles. I know Marvin's going to say something. <laughs> Leah Blake says, I'm hiding from the bus. <laughs> uh, Rochelle says, confidence is the best part of it. It is. It uh, is. Beyond said, shit, That's I guess cool. I better say hi if I want to come visit again. Love <laughs> Who? That's my hi, mom. guys. <laughs> hi. Uh, Charles Cherry asked, what about the gray area? <clears throat> you know, I talk about gray areas all the time, Charles. Jason, I call him Jason, the same person. With confidence. I always go back to the fact that, just like here, it, Kay was really bad about it all the time, which was good, not bad, but when before, even before you came along, she would be like, Marvin, I can't handle that dog. You're going to have to get him where we can lead him. <clears throat> and I would. I mean, if she told me that this morning, normally in the morning she could take him out of the kennels without getting drug around. Right. And now I do the same thing with you and Mariah yeah. and whoever, you know. But I start out with no gray area. I mean, in a lot of these dogs, I'll put a slip leash on and I'll pinch collar because they might bite me. But right from the gate, you know, I just start demanding respect mm -hmm. don't run me over don't mm -hmm. run through my gate when i open my gate you wait for me mm -hmm. i'll put my leash on you're not going to be doing cartwheels unless i get a dog once in a while i'll get a dog i can't i just got to try to rope him right. in the kennel and get him out right sometimes i had to let him out of the kennel and herd him to the round yep. pen just because i don't want to get eight you know yep. but <clears throat> normally i feel this miscommunication in a prime example of gray area and we do it all the time in the kennels yeah is when you walk out of your door at the house, yeah. you don't call Fluffy and be like, you want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? Daddy, Mommy, I get the leash. We'll go for a walk. And then your dog's bouncing off the walls and you can't put the leash on it. Yeah. That's a huge gray area. Yeah. For me, it's like, come over here, set your ass down. I'm going to put the leash on you. You're going to behave. You're going to walk out the door with me and you're yeah. going to stop outside the door until I shut the door and lock it. And then I might unlock it, open the door, and we might go back in and get a drink of water yeah. and come back out and do it again. Yeah. That's gray areas. Okay. But I feel it's gray areas because of the fact that Monday morning, this might be the way you do it. <clears throat> but Monday night when you get home from work, you come yeah. in the door and you've had a yeah. shitty day and you just want Fluffy to listen to you and you let him bounce off the walls when you're trying to put the leash on and take it for a walk. Yeah. That's what creates gray areas. One day it's like, it's this way, and the next day it's not, you know? And you just keep flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth. And, you know, for me, I go with the couch thing. If you got your little lap dog that sleeps on the couch, lays on the couch with you, and he's a turd and he bites you all the time, kick him off the couch. No gray area. You stay off the couch. If you want to be on my lap, we're going to sit on the floor, on your floor, not on my couch. And just change stuff like that. And if you call him to you, he got to come to you. Yeah. The gray area is you let him come to you, and then the next time you start talking to Joe Bob, and you let Fluffy run off, mm -hmm. and he didn't actually come to you when you called him. Yeah. Therefore, he don't have to come to you. Right. So, I mean, there's so many different gray areas with dogs and humans. We just, like I said, it's a fast, it, for me, it's fun in our kennels once in a while, especially in the winter when it's shitty weather. 
<clears throat> or 100 degrees in the summer, we're in the kennels with the heat and air conditioning on, whatever. And we all get in our chairs, and one person has to get up and see how many kennel doors they can open without any dogs coming out. Right. Because the bad thing is, the time before, we might open 10 kennels and let 10 dogs just come out and go to the playground. Yeah. And then we're going to change it to where they can't yeah. come out. Yeah. So for me, if those dogs are here for a while and they're experienced, they know when we open the door, they're like, okay, I'll wait. Yeah. They're not going to charge the door. Yeah. And for me, we took the gray area out because they don't charge the door yeah. if we asked them to wait. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing for people to understand. You can have your cake and eat it too sometimes, but you I feel you got to get that foundation in. Yeah. And if you've got a solid foundation, I don't know. I mean, you can always go back to it, you know. I did that with team roping. I'd be mess. I remember one night over roping practice, I missed like three or four steers in a row. Well, the guys are like, shit, man, what's wrong with you, dude? And I'm like, what? And he's like, you missed like three or four steers in a row. And I'm like, dude, I ain't roped for six months. He said, that's just an excuse. And I went back to the foundation and just roped my damn steer. And I roped my steers, you know. And it was a practice thing, so it wasn't like I was roping $100,000. But I took the gray area out of it there. I took the crazy out of it, and I just went and roped my steer. It wasn't nothing about being fast, yada, 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 who's watching me, anything else. And with the dog training, I think that's the same thing. You know, the gray area is just totally, you don't get respect. Mm -hmm. You don't demand respect in a way the dog can understand it. And you don't settle for nothing less. So, hope that answers your question, Jason. Awesome. Got anything, Brett? Yeah, Kim uh, Levine said Z had Z's a great time it. at board and training day. He's already passed out. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun having him back. Yeah. Uh, Rochelle says Chevy knows when I open the door to wait. Cool. And that's it. But does he run off when you open the door and he accepts out? That's the question. I doubt it. You know, for me, I, and I always, like, throw people under the bus. Same thing with feeding your dog. Yeah. I don't remember. We had a dog here a while back that would eat you if you got around his food or his bones and stuff. And But he would wait 30 minutes before he would touch it until you told him he could touch it. But then you couldn't stop him. Yeah, once you've released it. Yes, once you release And that's the yeah. thing about me and my cow dogs over the years, you know. Some people ask me, <clears throat> How'd you get in dog training and why'd you get in dog training and yada 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 and where did you learn dog training at? I didn't go to no certified trainer, so scratch that. I go back to the old days. I went to the school of hard knocks. I just jumped in both feet and learned. But one of my first things I learned is if I tell a dog to hunt them up, which means go get my cows, if I'm like he laid down, that was it. We didn't negotiate. And it don't matter if I just sent that dog and I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot to do something. And I down him. He got it down. And if I, he got to come back to me. And it was never negotiable, you know, once I learned how to get that accomplished. Right. And that's the thing that for me, people like if they play ball with a dog and they can't get the ball. There's gray area. Right. The yeah. dog doesn't come to you. Yeah. And the dog doesn't know in my world that if I go, at whatever he does got to quit if he's walking forward he better stop yeah and for me if he has a ball in his mouth and i say drop and he don't i go at he opens his mouth yeah 90 90 95 percent of the time yeah they're like I, evidently i can't hold this ball and so then i don't have to chase the dog to get the ball and i don't have to play tug with the ball they just drop the ball and let me have it and that's what gets so many of us in trouble is we make a game out of it, and then we chase them, and then we yeah. sometimes people use profanity, believe it or not. Yeah. And the dogs are like, "Ooh, we're really having fun now." Yeah. They're talking yeah. that funny language, yeah. so it makes a lot of difference for people. So, Brett, you got anything? Yes. Uh, shit. Or Rochelle said, "Nope, she does not run off." Good job. <laughs> and then Suzanne says, "Hi guys, thanks for having Bodie there for a sleepover." Hey Suzanne, I'm gonna text you later. Hot news. Uh. <laughs> Man, I just had something there I was going to throw and I forgot. Not good. Hmm. Well, I'll think about it in a minute. But I think that a lot of times for people is they forget always, and I say it constantly, that a dog is a man's best friend. I think, isn't that the saying for life? Everybody, as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> I don't never remember saying the dog is the man's best baby. Yeah, no. I don't think it's ever been said. The dogs don't do very well with that. <laughs> no, and that's what people try to make yeah. them, you know. Yeah. They, uh, I don't know. It's just really hard for me to understand. I told the guy today that owns uh, Luna. Mm-hmm. You can't always do the thing they do with the kids. Now, I'm going to count to three. One, and they go smoke a cigarette and come back. And yeah. Two, and mm-hmm. they go drink a beer and come back. Yeah. Don't make me say the next number. Yeah. And the kid's like, shit, what did I do anyway? Yeah. They already forgot about it, you know. And yeah. I think sometimes with the dogs that we don't even say that. We just like, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. Remember here a while back whenever we decided, or I decided to have our dogs not to go fetch a ball until we set a certain number? Yeah. You know, that's the thing is for me, any of that stuff is kind of easy. If you go into it with a lot of times with having fun. Yes, yes. If your dog knows sit, <clears throat> and if your dog knows they can't charge a ball until you release them, it makes it a lot different. But if you remember, I think I used Mari. Yeah. And she didn't even sit today. Yep. I mean, but it was just, I don't know, I had fun with it. Suzanne didn't have as much fun as I did. <laughs> she had a little bit of a hard time there for a minute or two until she started having I fun. I couldn't even get my dog to go after the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he might do it now. He probably would, yeah. <clears throat> but it was just fun because all we done was change the fetch to a number. I mean, it's not quite that simple but it's fairly close yeah and people don't go into it that way they go into it as some really wild crazy ass trick in a yeah. name yeah. like i said i changed set to banana one time on a dog i say banana and then set and yeah. people are like really i'm like you think they, they know. know what set <laughs> is no they don't and so and it's the same thing with bite my cow dogs at one time i had done some stuff with them where i couldn't Really say bite on a cow. So I taught my dogs if I went, they bit. And a lot of times the people didn't even hear me. The dog just bit. And they're like, whoa. And it's like, that's crazy shit, huh? <laughs> but it is. It's just that simple, you know. And like I said, with sport, I could touch anything with a stick and he would bite if I told him to. Yeah, you told me that. And it's just, for me, it's just a matter of consistent training. And taking a deep breath and having fun. Yeah. Sometimes people, I'm almost afraid they're going to hyperventilate around here. I'm like, breathe, take a deep breath. Get <laughs> out of <have> air. <laughs> because they get just, I don't know, they get so much into the moment and they get aggravated. And my thing is here, and I've told people time and time again, let me worry and you have fun. You know, I'm the one that's got to worry, not the person here training the dog. Just have some fun with your dog. So, Brett... Uh, you got Valerie. She said she asked, "Is barking related to lack of confidence?" And then I have another question after this for you. Who asked that? Valerie. A lot of times it is. Yeah. Yeah, nervousness. Yes. Yeah. And then there's a lot of times when I feel that dogs bark because people talk. Yeah. And the dog's just trying to talk back, you know. Or the dog thinks they're supposed to. Well, and that's what I say. I mean, dogs do. I mean, yeah. dogs bark at people like, oh, I think that you ought to have. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, then you start carrying hey, the UPS truck driver is here. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's crazy what makes dogs bark. But uh, sometimes, like, the day the dog, I don't know how to read that dog. And that's pretty unusual for me. The big joke had a dog that wanted to bark. I think you kid. read it right. It's just a, uh, what do you call it? Be confident, not cocky. Well, Yes. You don't want to just be stupid. I think you read it right. For me, I always tell people, and I tell you constantly, we have nothing to prove. We're not in no hurry. Yeah. If we're not in a position that we feel comfortable with continuing on at the rate we're going, or the direction, we can reroute or pause, you know? Yeah. And the day with that dog, that's what I did, because he kind of had me stumped. Yeah. If he was dog aggressive, it would have been a whole different world. Yeah. For me, but dogs are lunging at people. Yeah. I don't buy the myth. All oh, the tails wagging to the left three times they're or the right excited. one time, and they're barking, yeah. but they're not really barking, you know. But yeah. their teeth snarling, but they yeah. don't mean nothing. 
And it was like that dog was nervous that I didn't come in, talk to him, and pet him. He was. I mean, he was really nervous because he didn't get to make contact with you. Yeah. But I didn't know 100% sure what the contact was going to be. Yeah, me either. So, with dogs that bark, you know, there's all kinds of dogs that bark. There's baying dogs that bark. Like my dogs bark on cow trails sometimes. They bark. They get cattle held up. Hound dogs Scout bark, you know. on Saturdays. Set your dog free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so... Nervousness is a lot. Dogs do bark a lot because they're nervous. And uh, I'm trying not to throw nobody under the bus here. <laughs> but I, I don't remember. I was watching something or something. And this person was talking. Like my sister talks. She used to. I don't know now. But she used to talk really fast. It's like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and so. But some people get nervous. They do. They talk really fast. Yeah. <clears throat> Some people, if you notice, they get nervous, they really talk low. <clears throat> Some per people, I can be with them in a lesson. And you walk in and now they start talking to you. But their words are directed at me, but they won't look at me. They look at yeah. you. Yeah, that happens a lot. It does. It's like, yeah. damn. Yeah. Just look over here, you yeah. know. But And I one lesson one day, I left. I'm like, yeah. hey, just go ahead and finish it. That yeah. conversation ain't talking to me. Yeah. And... So I just laugh and let yeah. you have it. And I think yeah. you mentioned it later. Hey, thanks for just walking out. <laughs> no problem. Had to go. Things to do. But it is. It's just, to me, it's, and I kind of understand it, you know. I guess. Not really. I just said I did. So, no, nah, let's get that. I don't understand why you do it. You do it. But people do do it. And they don't never. I think it makes people uncomfortable how much you tell the truth right off the get-go. Well, I was going to say that, but I didn't. And now what I'm going to say is really not very nice, I guess. Because I've never had a person in your lesson talking to you. And I come in and they just direct themselves to me. I have them talk to me, but not just like pretend you're not there no more and they talk to me. No, that happens. I don't think so. Yeah, that happens a lot. <sighs> All right, <laughs> going on to the next subject. We're not agreeing on the subject. Hugh, well, Hugh Penland said, I tried taking Boo to an empty pet smart today, and it was amazing how distracted he became just by smell. So it's Boo? worth asking at a yeah. time. He just left you, man. He's looking for cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. For me, when I get in a situation like that, I go right back to a loose leash, long leash, pull my dog back to me, get him hooked back up to my leg, and yeah. go on. Yeah. But. We were just bragging on you. We don't want to throw you under the bus. I know you got a bad back, so we don't want to run you over. But you just got to remember that you're training on that dog, you know? And for me, I always, and I feel you should too, I look for those situations. Yeah. Because if you don't, it's going to get boring. Yeah. Because your dog's doing so good. So I'd be right back to the same place the next time I got a chance, and I'd yeah. be taking my dog back to it. Yeah. Until my dog got solid with it. And then I'd be like patting myself on the back, having an extra glass of moonshine, and <laughs> find me another spot. <laughs> All right, Brent, what do you got? Um, I have, hold on, sorry, I went to the video here real quick. Burnett says, I have a two and a half year old female Doberman. I feel like she has a puppy brain. I take her with me almost everywhere, so she's very socialized. However, she still gets so excited. And wants to jump on people when they ask to pet her. My question is, how do I get her to stop? I've tried so many different things and she's still a spaz. Well, you want to answer or you want me to? I'll let you answer. Yeah. I feel for me it goes back to the leash. Yeah. Yeah. Your dog has to be able yeah. to <clears throat> sit on a leash by your leg and let somebody approach it. And I, if you watch our videos... I'm sure we got one or a hundred out there Yeah. that shows you how to get people to approach your dog, but you got to find somebody that's going to help you, not hinder you. Yeah. And me, I just tell them, hey, I'm training on my dog, and I'd like for you to help me if you don't mind, but be a friend or family or whatever, anybody the dog will jump on. And it might take you 10 minutes to get your dog to set so they can touch it once. Yeah, because you can't let the people <clears throat> touch the dog Until unless it's, setting. it's sitting. But yeah. you've always got to be cautious with these dogs because... If you got a dog that just sounds like has no rules, you know, on petting, 
And if you just forcefully try to really get onto this dog hard, they'll bite you. I know your dog would never bite you, but I've never been bitten by a dog that would bite me. So it does happen, but it goes back to, like Bianca said, they had to sit there and behave. And sometimes you got to give a half a hair, you know, for a little bit rattled, somebody to touch it just so you can go on with it. Yeah. But yeah. like I did that today, I think, with uh, Luna because she was losing it pretty bad. She's trying hard, but she just wanted to be petted and hugged yeah. and fed a cheeseburger, yeah. I think. But you do that with those dogs, and you start teaching them that they don't get petted until they behave. And this dog will probably lean on you, you know. I don't like my dogs leaning on me, but I'll let them when I start out for support. Like Luna leaned on me pretty hard today. And I'll let them for a couple pets, you know, and then I'll start. I'll tell them to make them sit on their own dinner, you know, not lean on mine. But I'll make that dog square up right, not lean on me, yeah. and let the people pet them. And, but you, I think if you're going to do that, like Jason Charles was saying, well, go, don't get in that gray area and don't, if where you, you don't, don't have time. Yeah, and if you don't work the dog on a leash a lot, don't be like, okay, this is the day I'm going to put the leash on and just make it do this. you got to yeah. do the base work. And, get and if you're here local, you know, get a hold leash. of us and come by for a lesson. So uh, I'm going to throw this out there since we got quite a few people now on here and TikTok and Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and yada, yada, yada. But we're going to do a, I think, a two-day clinic this next in May, maybe, May. here at the ranch. Yeah. And people can come and camp out out here in a tent or in their travel trailer or motorhome or whatever they want to cruise in in. And we'll probably only take six or eight dogs. It's going to be a two-day thing. You can come in, like I said, Friday, Friday evening sometime afternoon if you're, you know, from out of town or whatever. And uh, camp out here. It'll be a total and, of eight sessions, right? Yes, four it'll one be four, day, four on Saturday, next. four on Sunday, and we use, and it'll probably be more than that because it's going to be a camp out weekend thing. Yeah. But that's what we're going to advertise: four hours Saturday, four hours Sunday. We'll start at like eight in the morning on Saturday, eight to nine, take a break from nine to ten, go from ten to eleven, take a break from eleven to twelve, and then we'll go from twelve to two. And since we're going to be camped out here, we'll probably take an hour or two break, and then we'll play with dogs a little bit, and then we'll have a nice dinner or whatever, you know. And uh, we'll probably furnish the dinner. The prices we ain't got exact yet, but we're only going to take six or eight dogs. So if somebody does want in it, I'd be contacting Bianca or Joshua, I guess, not Bianca. Yeah. Uh, contact 503-730-0827. Yeah, and she probably won't know what you're talking about <laughs> if you do it right away because we just kind of got this thing in the wind right now. But with my cow dog stuff, I have people from California and Colorado and different states, Washington, come into them and spend a weekend out here. Some stayed in the hotel in town. Uh, Ty, he stayed out here in his travel trailer, you know, plugged in that sawmill and the power. And uh, so we're going to do it, you know. Uh, and for me, it don't matter if we only have two or three dogs show up, then we'll just bring a bunch of our dogs and work them. Uh, whatever it is, but we'll have a lot of fun, and I hope we make a lot of nice dogs. We're going to go, I don't know, probably least aggressive type dogs, least yeah, aggressive. Least reactive. Yeah, yeah, but we won't take dogs for this clinic that's got a hold of dogs and try to maul them down yeah. and kill them and or stuff. Or people. Yeah, our people. Yeah, that have uh, bit dogs or people. Yeah, because we don't want to do that in the middle of a clinic and have that kind of worry, I guess. Yeah. But the thing is, if we do this, well, we're going to do it, but <clears throat> when we do do it, your dogs will have to be secure, you know, at night and during the day. You'll have to have good crates or kennels or whatever you keep them in. If not, as long as your dogs are vaccinated and stuff, we'll have extra kennels here somewhere that we can keep them in. So I think it's time to bail off here. Brett, you got anything? Uh, that's it. You just have a couple people saying thank you. Um, and then Burnett asked where we are. I said Sherwood, Oregon. Yeah, and then they can visit us at www or www.marvincruzdogfitcher.com. Yes. And remember, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. So check us out, and we'll see you all next Wednesday night. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.